What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the best routes that you can run in one-on-one. -on -one. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it can teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or a quarterback and would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 11 more states for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Dallas, Texas. That camp is completely sold out, but they will be heading out to the DMV area, St. Louis, Missouri, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to one of those cities and would like to train with us this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get all the information, how you can sign up to work with us. So very first link below, fellas. Let's get started with this video. So now, first route I want to discuss is going to be like this like seven to eight yard out route here from Hunter Renfro versus this outside leverage off man coverage on the goal line. So the most important part of this is that the route is or the defensive player is on the goal line we're going to talk about this route in a second with at like the middle of the field but it's a little bit different based on where hunter renfro's at in the specific situation so let's play this full speed so he comes out he closes the space of the db gives him this hard rocker step move and then is able to create separation on this out route and make a great catch right so in the red zone on the goal line obviously everything is tighter coverages are tighter and this db is going to obviously be more disciplined what a db is taught not to do when they're in the red zone if they are on the goal line is they're taught to not backpedal so normally what you would teach on an out route versus this outside shade off man coverage is oh you want to attack the inside shoulder in the inside hip of the db the goal is to get him to flip his hips open to the fade and then we slip back underneath but we're really not a vertical threat in this situation because we're in the red zone if they, if you run full speed and you run past this db he's probably going to be thinking yeah i'm just going to let you run out the back of the end zone there's really not much of a vertical threat here but what there is a threat of is an inside route so this db is obviously lined up in outside leverage every single time as a wide receiver when we come up to the line to be unguardable because again being unguardable being that wide wide receiver that runs great routes is not just about having great technique. It's also about having a high football IQ. You have to come up to the line with a plan. So there are three things that we want to look for. Number one, what's the leverage or the shade of the DB? So is he outside, head up, or inside? So the DB's outside. Number two, how close or how far is he from you? He's maybe about like six or seven yards off. He's outside. And then what type of coverage is it? Is he looking to the inside or is he looking at me? He's looking at us in this case. So it's outside leverage, off man coverage on the goal line. That's the situation. So we know when this DB's lined up outside shade, he's trying to protect where? The outside. So if I have an outside breaking route, I'm probably not going to be able to just square him up and give him a fake inside and then run the out route. I'm probably going to have to threaten that inside shoulder and inside hip, try to get him to crash on a post so I could give my quarterback as much space to the sideline as possible. We're not going to be able to just run around him because a disciplined DB will keep his leverage and force me to that sideline and be right on my hip. That quarterback is not going to throw the ball. So now what Renfro does here is he's smart. He closes the space. He's not going to make a move and try to get this DB to bite with like two yards of space because that two yards of space is just room for this db to recover he's going to close the space anytime we have cushion from a db i don't care if he's two yards away i don't care if he's eight yards away we have to close that cushion we have to make him uncomfortable and we have to try to step onto his toes so when he closes the space here what's the main like how would you guys run think about it like this when this db is outside leverage what does he have to the inside he probably has help Right? So he's trying to prevent the outside route, but he's trying to force the wide receiver to his help, which is his safety, linebacker dropping into coverage, whatever it is. So if you were to run like a route, like a post route or a dig route, you would probably attack his leverage, give him a fake outside, then take the inside release to create a bigger window for the QB. So that's what we're trying to make it look like. Because at the end of the day, it's still man coverage. At the end of the day, we're still in the red zone. So this DB is still threatened by the quick slant, the quick post, the quick dig. So that's what we want to try to do. A great wide receiver can make their routes look the same. So when Renfro comes up to him, he closes the space, and now he threatens that inside shoulder with that hard rocker step. Now, I'm not saying that you want to fall down like this. I'm not saying that that's something that you want to try to practice. But threatening him to the inside and actually stepping to the inside is what's going to get this DB to crash is what's going to create you more separation back to the outside. So it'll create a separation because we sold the route. 
But also, while I'm creating separation, I'm giving the quarterback room. And anytime you have an outside breaking route, it is essential to give that quarterback room to be able to throw you open. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Renfro showcasing a high football IQ. And again, fellas, it's not just about technique. It's also about having a plan. So now, this next example, like I said, this is going to be a more open field example, if you will. This wide receiver is lined up probably on like the 40, 45 yard line. You see how he's got outside leverage off man coverage. Again, come up to the line. We want to look for three things. DB's leverage, how close or how far he is, and then what type of coverage it is. So will this DB be threatened by a deep fade in this specific scenario? Absolutely, right? At the end of the day, it's still man coverage. And at the end of the day, DB's they're human, right? They don't want to get beat deep. So that's what we have to sell in this case. So let's play this full speed and let's watch how this wide receiver goes about this route. He attacks that inside shoulder with a lot of speed, gets that DB to flip his hips. But at the same time, it's the same concept as the goal line route. It's just a different way to run it. It's the same principles. Let's threaten the inside shoulder. Let's get him to bite on the fade or an inside route so I can get separation, but also give my quarterback space. Those are the two main things that we have to do. Because again, you guys got to remember when a DB's an off coverage like this, he's an off coverage to prevent the deep route, right? Like if he thought we were just going to run like a quick flat route, he'd be up and press to prevent that quick flat. But since he's off, he's trying to prevent the deeper outside breaking route. He's trying to prevent the fade. He's trying to make us uncomfortable. So we have to make him uncomfortable. So when it comes down to this specific route, DBs will not be able to guard this if you sell it correctly. So there are three things in my mind that come down to selling fade. Right, So it's about your speed. So when you come off that ball, we obviously can't run. And then right before the break points, start to slow down. Because when you change your speed, the DB is going to change his speed. Because DBs are reading two things. Their eyes are going to be watching your hips, which is going to bring me to my next point in a second here. And they're going to be trying to read your speed. I'm sure every single wide receiver, all of you, have gotten to that point where you're like in the third or the fourth quarter. And a DB starting to get your speed. Your separation starting to decrease a little bit. And, and it naturally, it's going to. Because that DB's been playing with you, playing every single snap right now next to you. So he's getting used to it. He's starting to get your timing down. But at the end of the day, if I can sell with my speed and I'm really making, believe, making him believe that I'm going deep, he will commit to it, fellas. He has to. He has to honor it at a certain point. But now there's two other things that I need to do. Right before the break point, I can't start taking choppy steps. So many wide receivers, because they lack the explosion in their hips, they lack the balance and the ankle stability to make a cut on a dime. And we're going to talk about that in a second here, some drills and some exercises you might be able to do. But because wide receivers lack that, they like to chop chop their feet and prepare for the break. And that's another form of slowing themselves down. And then last but not least, because they know they have to drop their hips at a break or make an explosive cut right before the break, they'll raise up their pad level so they can drop their hips or so they can explode into the break. And that is also an indicator because remember a DB is looking at my hips. So if I can keep good body language, hips and shoulders stay level, I'm running hard, I'm running in full stride. All of those things, fellas, is what will get that DB to commit. So when I put the brakes on, I could actually get him to that position where he opened the gate, I slip under him, and I could go run to that sideline. So if you have to run that 10 yard out versus outside shade off man coverage, and you're in the middle of the field, that is how I would go about attacking that route. So now, like I said, how are you able to, because everybody knows to do that, I would assume, right? Especially if you've been watching this channel, you've been keeping up with the videos, you know that that's how you would want to want, want to run that route. But at the break point, that's where a lot of guys struggle because a lot of guys struggle to be able to put the brakes on like this. What they'll do is they'll try to break down, but they drift up field or they slip and they fall back or they take a million steps at the break point and it takes them a while to get out of this thing. All of those things, fellas, can be solved by working on a few things. Number one, you got to make sure that you have strong legs. Playing the wide receiver position, a lot of it's about being able to absorb force. You're running at a very, very high speed. You have to be able to absorb force on your two on your legs. Um, whether you're cutting off a one foot, whether you're cutting off a two steps, you have to be able to absorb force. So doing a lot of exercises in the gym to strengthen your legs is a great way to help you absorb that force. You need to have strong legs. You cannot be a wide receiver and have twig legs and expect to be able to break on a dime downfield. 
A lot of times wide receiver coaches, they'll set up cone drills and the cones will be two, three yards away and they'll have receivers just run all these zigzag fancy crap throughout the cones that doesn't help you with this. That doesn't help you 10 yards downfield because you're not practicing good habits. You're just trying to get in and out of a drill. We need to make sure the things that I'm doing are realistic. So working on your leg strength is how you can do that. So getting in the squat rack, doing squats, doing single leg squats, doing pistol squats, you know, all or not pit, pistol squats, single leg squats, that's the same thing. But doing um, like Bulgarian split squats where one leg is out, one foot is on a bench and you squat down. All of those things will strengthen your legs and help you get stronger. Now, another thing that you have to be able to do, because a lot of people are, what are they worried about? Oh, coach, I'm going to tear my ACL or I'm going to hurt my ankle if I break hard like this and I run full speed and try to cut. So doing a lot of one-legged exercises, like exercises where you have to hop back and forth and balance on one leg will improve your ankle stability, will improve your explosion. All of those things will translate to the top of the route. And when you combine that with good, realistic drills, you become very, very dangerous when it comes to your cuts. But like I said, we can do all of that and not have a high football IQ and not be able to get a DB to this position, and it could all be for naught. You have to have a combination of both if you want to be unguardable. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job at this wide receiver flipping that DB's hips, selling that fade, and winning on that out route. So now, next example I want to talk about here is something called a kick step split release. So this is, you you could honestly, you don't need the kick step on this. That's what I'm going to be breaking down. But it's a great thing to generate some explosion and some twitch to a split release. Because this is a great release for wide receivers going up against a bigger, stronger physical DB. So I'm sure all of you at some point, you know, have been in a one-on-one situation, whether that's in a live game, whether that's at a camp, whether that's at practice, and you're going up against a strong safety, a linebacker, somebody bigger than us, and they've gotten physical, jammed us off our spot, or at least gotten hands and gotten a pretty good shot on me, right? And that's a DB's goal, right? A DB's goal in press is to honestly disrupt timing and disrupt spacing on the route. If they can get hands and disrupt your timing with the QB, they won the rep, right? So a split release is a great release to combat that physical press coverage DB. So let's watch what this wide receiver does here. He does this kick into a split release. One of the most sudden releases, twitchy releases I have ever seen. And let's break this thing down. So when you got a guy who's going to get hands. One of the mistakes that wide receivers will make off the line is that when a DB punches, a DB jams with two hands, and when they lunge at you, fellas, you got to understand that's not good technique, and it can be beaten very easily. But when they lunge at us, they shoot hands at us, so many times guys are afraid of the hand contact and their instinct. Like, Because like, let's say you're standing in front of somebody, and they go to punch you in the face. What are you probably going to do? You're probably going to lean back. Or you're probably going to duck, right? So when a guy jams you off the line, what a lot of receivers do is they lean back. But when they lean back, your body weight is going backwards, your chest is exposed, and that's exactly what a DB wants you to do because now he can jam you off that spot. He can jam you back three to four yards. So what we need to do is we need to stay in a good explosive pad level position, and I need to have some balance with my lower half because think of it like this. Let's say I'm standing in front of you and you're standing with your feet super close together. Like you look like a pencil. If I push you, you're probably going to fall over. Now, if you widen your feet out, bend your knees, lean forward, and I push you, you're going to have a little bit more give. So when you got a DB who's being physical off the line, it's the same concept. So that's where this split release comes into play. Now, a split release is where you take your back foot and you move it up even with your front foot, which in this case would be his left foot. The quarterback's to the right, but he's got his stance switched. And your front foot would go out. So front foot goes out, back foot comes up even with the front foot. So you essentially split your feet. And when you split your feet, do you need to get this wide? Probably not. But I would say what I would teach is just slightly outside of your shoulders. That's where I would teach on this split because that's a good balance space. And if you stay in a good pad level position, that shoot from the DB, those hands aren't going to do much. When I tell my wide receivers, pretend like you are under a small door and you want to stay underneath the door. Split those feet and stay underneath the door. Now, when you do this split release, it can't be slow. There's got to be some twitch to it because the goal of this release is to freeze the DB, then leave him. I want to freeze him, leave him. And that freeze comes from having some suddenness or being twitchy, if you will, with your feet. And that's where that kick step comes into play. So I'm sure a lot of you, if you're familiar with this channel, you've probably seen me talk about this kick step. And I usually talk about it on a release like, like a wide step release where you're throwing a jab or maybe a one-two or a diamond release, but you kick behind with this back foot 
All that serves to do is it loads up your hips. It creates some explosion. So when you get into the move, it, you're not doing it from a position of being flat-footed. It just creates a twitch element to it that can freeze that DB. So when he does shoot hands, I can leave him. And again, fellas, it's all about having a plan with your feet that set up the hand technique. Plan with your feet to set up the hands. If that DB does get hands and you're in that split position, if you're twitchy with your feet and you maybe got his feet moving, or you're in a good position to balance and he shoots hands, we shouldn't worry about it. I'm in a position of balance, and that is how you can combat that physical guy. Now, are there other releases you can use? Absolutely. But I think this split is one of the best that you can do if your feet are sudden, if you have that twitch element to it, and you stay in a good patentable position. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver hitting that split release, swatting those hands, and then being able to get that separation. All right, fellas, we're going to be talking about next this kind of like it's a four-step release, if you will. So it's going to be another situation where it's like two quicks two heavy steps as I call it, but it's a four-step release. And there are a lot of four-step releases out there, which is why I'm not going to call it just a four-step release, but it's two quicks, two heavy. So two, two, or one, two, one, two. It's two quick steps, two heavy steps. And it kind of builds off of a crossover. So let's think about the situation here. We got probably like head up coverage, a little bit inside shade, and this wide receiver is going to be running a slant route. But remember, think about the situation because, again, the situation also matters. We want to come up to the line and we want to identify three things. We want to identify DB's leverage, how close or how far he is, what type of coverage it is. We identified all of those. Head up, a little bit inside shade maybe, and he's about three yards off, four yards off, and it's man coverage because he's looking right at me. But he's on the goal line. So what is he not going to do? He's not going to open up the gate. He's not going to be undisciplined and play like a deep fade. So what a lot of people think is, oh, if I got to run a slant route and I have man coverage, I'm going to do something called the diamond release. And a diamond release would work. You know, like if he was inside shade press right on the line, a diamond release is where you take three hard steps to the outside, you get him to commit, and then we slip back underneath on a fade. Now, that's probably not going to work in this specific coverage because one, it's on the goal line and he's probably not going to open up as easy. Two, if we took three hard steps steps to the outside, that DB probably wouldn't bite as much and there's too big of a gap. So what we would want to do is we would want to close the space with him, give him a fake to the outside, maybe threaten him with like a goal line fade or some kind of outside release and then slip back underneath. And that's what this four step release does. So let's watch what this wide receiver does here. One, two, three, four. And I know those steps are extremely fast, but that is how the release has to be. I think of it as like a ladder drill, fellas. Like you guys have all probably done ladder drills before, but like, let's say you're starting on a ladder drill. You step into the box twice, and then you step out of the box twice. Step into the box, step out of the box. So it's one, two, three, four. That's how I want you to think of this release. So he does this little hesitation skip here with his left foot. That's honestly just to close the space with the DB. Is that essential? Do you have to do that? No, but that little hesitation step also helps your feet stay inside your frame. So you have a little bit more explosion with this release. But he takes that little hesitation step. So he comes at him, hezzies, and then he goes one, two, three, four. And again, that three, four, that last step, his hips and shoulders faking to the outside. He's stepping outside the DB's frame. That is what's going to get him to jump. And that is what can create a separation on that slant. So remember, fellas, same thing we were talking about in the beginning of this video. Anytime there's space, we want to make sure that we close the space. We have to have a good pre-snap process to tell us how to run my route, and the technique has to be on point. So whenever you're in press coverage or whenever you got a DB in man, remember, his eyes are supposed to be where? His eyes are supposed to be watching your hips. So when we close that space, we go one, two, three, four. That last step of the release to fake to the outside, better step to the outside, and your hips and your shoulders better be saying that you are going to the outside. That's the only way I get him to bite, and that is how I can create that easy separation. So this is a great unguardable route. You're on the goal line. You got head up press, that four-step release, or that ladder drill release, whatever you want to call it, however it helps you remember it, is a great way to get open. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job of that wide receiver getting space and winning on that slant route. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, we're going to be traveling out to 11 more states this offseason for two-day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So if you guys want some more information on that, how you can train with us, where you can sign up for it, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you there. I'll see you guys next time.